Hi, it's Mark from Surfrock Studios and welcome to another Logic tutorial. Today we're going to try and solve that annoying issue where we want to try and have multiple controller synths set up in our studios and uh, we want to be able to assign them to different tracks within our Logic project. So you can trigger a piano sound from one, a synth sound from another. You may have a digital drum kit and you want to have a jam with a mate for instance and you find that when you're setting up the drum sound to work on the drum kit and when you're setting up some sort of keyboard tone on your keyboard that everything triggers everything so when you hit a drum pad you get the synth sound when you hit the synth you get the drum sound as well as the synth sound and it's just chaos you get this audio chaos and it's frustrating and many of us struggle to try and get everything to be separated now hopefully we'll solve that today the method we're about to use relies on the fact that your individual devices can have their transmit midi channel number value changed so basically MIDI works over 16 different channels and if we can try and siphon off the individual instruments to run down a particular channel rather than all of those channels at the same time then we can separate them out quite easily in Logic. So um, I don't have multiple synths to show you this but I'm going to basically set up three sounds. Let's take a look at Logic. We have a piano sound here, we have a string sound and we have some kind of synth sound, okay? So some of you may find that when you're trying to set everything up so you can have a jam, you need to have the actual tracks armed for them to be listening, but when you start playing stuff, you get everything triggering at the same time. We've got the synth, the strings, and the piano all at the same time, and that's what's frustrating. Now, the way that we're gonna do this, like I say, we're gonna use that transmit channel from our devices to be able to send into Logic, but we need to make sure Logic is listening to those individual channels correctly. So the way we do this, first of all, is we're going to take a look at the info on the tracks. So I'm gonna go over to Bosendorfer Grand Piano Track and we can see the MIDI channel set to all, so it's listening to all 16. So we wanna kind of filter that down so it only listens to channel one. And then we go onto our string sounds and we want to filter that down so it only listens to channel two and our string sounds so it listens to only channel three. So we can see that we've got piano one, we've got MIDI channel two and we've got MIDI channel three on the synth sound. So, so far, all so good. But when we go and arm everything up again and we go and play, everything is still listening to everything and people go like, well, that should be working. And in the most part, I would agree with you. However, we have to do one extra thing, which is the bit that most people get lost with. So let's just go into file and go down to your project settings, go into recording, and then we have our demix by channel if multi-track recording. We need to make sure that is checked. Now it's very important that you understand the actual language that's being used in there. So auto demix by channel, that's all fairly self-explanatory, but if multi-track recording, that's very important that you analyze it says if multi-track recording. So what we end up with is we have our three different voices which are all operating neatly on their individual MIDI channels. Now my synth here is transmitting on MIDI channel one. So obviously if I am selected on the Bosendorfer Grand Piano, and I play, because I'm sending on one, it's receiving on one, we're gonna get the piano sound. However, if I go down to the string sound, which is set to MIDI channel two, and my keyboard is transmitting on MIDI channel one, I get the string sound, and it's because I'm not using multi-tracking here. I'm purely using single sound. So this is very useful. So you can have your main synth that you operate from, and you don't have to start fiddling around with everything. It's only once you bring in your multi-track environment that you can start to separate everything out. So if we go and click down on our three individual instruments, now, because I am playing through my synth, which is transmitting on MIDI channel one, I have all three sounds set up. It's now purely listening to the piano sound because that's the only one that's set to listen to MIDI channel one. It's now demixing. If I change my transmit channel to number two, and now get my string sound, and if I change my transmit channel to number three, I get my synth sound. Now we can see this if I record as well. So I can set this all going in a simple click track. I'm going to start on one, two, three, four. Let's change it over to channel two, three, four. 
and change it over to channel three. Now if I leave it recording for a second, you can see everything is still on the channel one, but the minute I press stop, it separates everything out to those individual instrument tracks and you can see at the point where I switched the individual transmitting channels. So obviously if you have multiple keyboards set up and they're all fixed to those different transmitting channels, they will automatically just work like that for you. So you can have anything you want set up, your drum kits, your whatever, and you can set them to the individual tracks all using those 16 different MIDI channels. So there we go, that's the simplest way to get your real world controller synths to separate out their individual sends into various instruments within Logic. Of course, if you have an instrument out there that doesn't enable you to change the actual transmit channels, then uh, hopefully I will have a video to solve that for you very, very soon. Uh, there'll be a little card up there some point once those videos go live. Remember, we have a load more Logic tutorials on our YouTube channel, uh, along with a load more guitar tuition, products and reviews and backing tracks, etc. So there's a whole feast of stuff to be had. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. Please leave a message in the comments section below. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and please subscribe so you see our future content. I've been Mark, Safrock Studios. See you later.